everybody. It's Megan Elizabeth from AboveRubyStudio.com, and today I wanted to work on a card. Um, I've been using the word forward for a lot of different things recently, and so I was playing around with it, and I decided that I wanted to make a cute little card using the phrase falling forward. And I'm going to just use some different Stampin' Up! papers that I have, and I wanted to cut it out, but I just kind of wanted to show you how I created this and the layers I created and what I did, and then we'll just put it together really quickly. Uh, what I did, I'll just kind of go through it with you. Um, I decided, I started with the text and was really kind of playing with what kind of text I wanted to use. So I put in the text falling forward. Oops. And can't spell apparently. That's okay. And with that text... I came into my Cricut Design Space here. Okay, there we go. And clicked on font, and I just clicked on my system fonts. And that was kind of what I went through, the ones that I already downloaded and have been using from defont.com or other um, things that I have. And I was just kind of going through and trying to look at, like, what I felt would actually work for what I was doing and I kind of so the font I used is called love rock which is kind of fun um, and what I did was came over here to this advanced settings and I ungrouped my letters and I just used the little shift key and I moved them so that they're all slightly touching so you can use your arrows or you can use your mouse to just move things close together so that they slightly touch. And I'm not going to do the whole thing all over again, but I'll give you the general idea with the word falling. I just want them to touch a little bit. Now, I will tell you, this is a really rough brush stroke font, so it may not cut as smoothly as some may like. It's going to cut a little bit rustically and a little bit like jagged, and I'm okay with that because that's the look I'm going for with this particular card. So I'm going to weld this. Oh, okay. Sometimes when the letters are a little bit too close, they weld a little bit funky. So you just kind of want to adjust and shift things a little bit. And then let's do this again. When I weld, it cuts out as like one solid piece. So that all moves together. Okay, so that's what I did for the words falling and forward here. And then what I did... I duplicated this. So then I did a little duplicate. So I had two of these and I grabbed one of my little shapes and I grabbed a square, as you can see. I turned off the um, size aspect ratio and I just stretched it so that it would fit the front of my A2 size card. So I just kind of played with the size and made it what I wanted it to be. And then I brought it over and I welded those two shapes together so that I could have a little base to put my words on kind of like a fun little thing so I just did the a weld function and then what I'm able to do is with the two different colors you can change the colors at any time to any color that you would like um, I'm able to kind of layer them on top of each other so we'll just push this one to the back and you can see this one on the front and then it kind of overlaps and gives you a little base to put it on and then I thought well it'd be cute to do a couple hearts so what I did was with that shape I grabbed a little shape here and I grabbed a heart and I made it the size I want it to be, whatever size that happens to be, and lined it up down here, and then I duplicated it, and I kind of looked and played, and I looked at how that played, and then I duplicated it again, and I looked and played, and saw how I wanted that to be, and I kind of messed around and lined them up, and then I clicked on one of the hearts, and I held down my control button and clicked on the big falling forward image, and then I came down here and clicked on slice, and what that slice did was cut out the little heart image right onto the uh, falling forward that I had. So then I'm going to push this to the back, and I can see my two other hearts, which I moved them around a little bit here, so we're just going to kind of move them back. I'm going to click on one of the hearts, control, and click on the falling forward. You can only choose two images at a time for a slice. So from that standpoint, um, that's why I'm doing it this way. And then I'm going to click on, or at least that's what I'm finding. And I'm going to slice it again. So then it cuts out three of those hearts. Obviously, you could put the hearts on top and just attach it, and it would still work uh, similar ways. But this way, you can kind of really see your design and how it plays and, and goes together and everything on your card. And then I just took two other hearts and put them up there. So now what we're going to do, I'm going to just delete this stuff. I'm going to save my image. It's called Falling Forward. And I'm going to go over and click Make It. 
And again, the falling forward is going to cut a little bit rough. Um, we're going to put it together and I'll show you what it looks like in real life paper. All right, everybody. So hopefully, as you can see here, I have my A2 size card base. I just used some chocolate chip cardstock from Stampin' Up. I have some powder pink that's going to go right on the front. So we'll just start by adhering those two pieces together. Right to the front here. And then, like I told you, these are going to cut a little bit rough and a little bit jagged. It's the type of font that you, I used. Um, you are welcome to use the same font. You're welcome to copy right from the image that I made or um, create your own and use the same kind of technique here. That's my little eye dot, so I might not, don't want to lose that. Um, let's see. We're going to use just a little bit of this guy. And I'm going to use a little bit of my zig. I got a new squeeze and roll. I'm so excited. <laughs> to have that back in my life again. Um, I went to Hobby Lobby the other day and I was looking to get a new We Are Memory Keepers corner chopper and could you believe it? They didn't have any. They were completely sold out of the corner rounder corner chopper. I was like, are you kidding me? This is like the only thing I want. I went to AC Moore. They didn't have it. So I'm probably gonna have to order it online. Not that that's a bad thing. I just was already in the stores and I thought, oh, I can just pick it up and I haven't been able to do that yet. I've been like dying to have that back in my life again. Okay, so that's just going to go right here along the front. I'm going to do the little dot for my eye. Now, you don't even have to layer on the chocolate chip. I'm using this wood green paper is from Stampin' Up. It's actually called um, wood textures designer paper. There's some really beautiful wood texture designs in this particular um, like gorgeous wood texture paper. Like, hello. I love it. Like, there's so many different uses, and it is double sided, by the way. P.S. So it's a little darker on one side. You get different effects balsa wood, and um, that just looks like rings of a tree cut. I love it. There's just so many gorgeous patterns in here and it really does look so much like wood. And I think there's so many different uses for it. So I'm a huge fan of that designer paper pack. Again, it's called um, Wood Textures Designer Paper. I'll leave a link over at AboveRubyStudio.com so that you can grab it because I know it's a little bit trickier to find things than what maybe you had been used to with me before. So I'll leave links for all of this stuff for you. But no stamps required. I'll even leave a little link for you guys to grab this little design if for some reason a falling forward card would fit something that you're working on or that you would want um, as an occasion or whatever for a card you'd be giving. I'm kind of leaving it slightly offset. Again, it's a little bit of a rougher cut because of the font that I chose. I'm just going to place that down. right on there. I'm just going to glue right on. I love the squeeze and roll. Oh, it's so easy. This just makes it a little bit more dimensional and it has like the F and the G kind of coming down over top. So either way, whatever works best for your, for your needs. The other thing I thought about doing was actually doing like a wood grain embossing folder texture on the powder pink, but we'll just keep it really simple. But that's the other thing you could do with this to add a little bit more to it. And I'm just going to do these two little hearts here. And then I'm going to grab a... grab the white gel pen and I'm going to do a little bit of dashing around the powder pink. This color is super in for 2017-2018 year. It kind of is crazy to me how in this color is. Um, it's pretty. And I really have always loved the pink and brown combination. When Jenna was born, I did her nursery in pink and brown. I also really like pink and gray. So um, if you look at the cut files, I just use some like default pink and gray. 
I knew I was going to use the pink, so that's why I changed the square color to that, but you can use gray, you can use the wood grain, you can use brown, whatever really works for you. And I'm going to add just a little bit of something on here. There we go. Really simple. And that is my card for today's Tuesday tutorial. I hope you guys enjoy the moments and I hope you'll come back over to AboveRubyStudio.com again really soon. I'm going to be doing more Cricut tutorials, other fun Stampin' Up! projects. And as always, you can come over and join our live creative workshops, classes, and tutorials at our brand new SheMakes.club. We would love to have you over there. We have prizes and giveaways every single month for members exclusively, special discounts and deals, and so much more. I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you soon. Bye.